Calling All Explorers is a podcast from the Harvard Innovation Laboratory in Boston. Your hosts are Harvard junior Jessica Pizzolides and Harvard Business School alum Ronald Terrazas. Along with Dr. Gordon Chu, they are co-founders of iLab member Fingra, a for-profit public benefit corporation dedicated to discovery, development and commercialization of materials that can transform humanity's ideas of sustainability and ecology. Dr. Chu is our regular guest. He is a globally recognized scientist who is author or co-author of 41 international patents, many dealing with the wonder material graphene. He is a distinguished alum of Harvard Business Analytics Program and of Wharton's Advanced Management Program. Read more about us at fiendgra.com. Dr. Chu, it is lovely having you here. Um, Jesse, it's uh, great to, to be here. Today, I really want to understand how your philosophy of scientific exploration has fed into um, your successes and particularly in founding Fingra. So I'd love to just hear a bit more about your background. Yeah, Jesse, I, I, am, I am another human being just like anyone else. I happen to be a father of two lovely daughters, and I try to adopt this mindset of um, exploration over allowing myself or selling myself for exploitation. And that kind of was the theme of many, many things that I do. Um, the things that got you and I together happened that I was on campus and we had met and I was studying the interactions of uh, at data analytics and the potential for it to apply to other systems, mm -hmm. such as graphene that you mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. I've been involved in graphene also as a consequence of using an exploratory mindset. So this exploratory mindset, what exactly is it so that listeners out there can become engaged and why are we calling all explorers? I believe that everybody begins life from the mindset of, I want to explore. I want to explore the toys I have, the people I meet, the food I'm putting in my mouth, the words I learn, and let it roll into my mouth and my tongue and see how I can say happy birthday differently, or do I just say it mechanically? It is in that moment that someone might come along and say, that's ridiculous. You need to focus, right? You need to, <laughs> you need to spend more time on just numbing yourself down so that you can become really valuable with your resume, uh, your academics, your scores, so that you look hireable. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful. Large corporations that are bent on innovation have realized that we need to encourage staff, people, uh, groups, stakeholders to innovate because without innovation, uh, especially now in the technology area, you could suddenly be thrown off your horse. Nokia Corporation is an excellent example of how they dominated. They were the number one phone in the whole world. And suddenly, because they insisted on a certain system, Symbian, um, they, they fell out of favor. And suddenly, after a very short period of time, you did not see them anymore as a mobile phone company. They're still around, but largely different. I'm going to use a different example, Jack Ma. You know, the, the, na the first name Jack, the last name Ma, is probably pretty common in China. And imagine Jack Ma's mother telling him, you know, if you work hard and you work at this place that manufactures the iPhone, you might, by working very hard and doing everything you're supposed to do, you might become the manager of maybe 40, 100 people who are manufacturing the iPhone, and I would be proud of you. Jack Ma, the one that we know that's become popular, became the founder and CEO of Alibaba. When we compare, wow. right, when we compare the differences of that energy, that potential, and realizing the potential, mm -hmm. is really from an exploratory mindset versus let me just allow myself to be exploited by anybody who wants me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think this this conflict, this trade-off kind of between 
genuine learning and um, exploration, as we say, and kind of, you know, finding those more hireable, employable um, accolades to say kind of, you know, really does atrophy at that, um, you know, pursuit of, of exploration. And I'd love to hear Dr. Chu, um, just you've mentioned graphene throughout and I mentioned it in our introduction, but can you tell our listeners a bit about what this wonder material is and how you have employed this sense of exploration to to harness its its powers? Sure, absolutely, Jesse. Um, you know, not so long ago, since you're a junior at Harvard, just w- less than five years ago, you were still in high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, and although it was longer for me to be in high school, I think that high school and middle school and grammar school are the best times in our lives. They are so blissful, and yet we, so many people, hate that period of time because they 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 don't know enough. Um, but at the same time, they they have all the time in the world to explore. So with mm-hmm. that, I'm going to answer your question about graphene and how I approach graphene when graphene was first discovered. Graphene was discovered in 2004, mm-hmm. um, and I was not involved in graphene at that time. It was uh, theorized for well over 50, 60, 70 years, but I had the chance of meeting an incredible individual. Her name um, is a professor, uh, Millie Dreselhaus, and she was at MIT. And I met her in 2010 in, in, in because I was representing the potential of making graphene differently than anyone else. Mm-hmm. My project was to take graphite and mm-hmm. to see whether or not I could convert graphite into graphene directly without mining graphite. So if we drilled the graphite that the earth made and applied electrochemical systems to it, maybe we could destroy the graphite and in that destruction process, make graphene. That got her attention. That got a number of people's attention, including the two (laughs) Nobel Prize winners, because it was so different. Succeeding in that, right? Succeeding to make that a reality means that I would get a patent granted in, you know, with my name on it, uh, the patent office would review it, but it also means that that truly did not exist. (laughs) It wasn't in any textbook. It wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't agreed upon by most people. And to stay on that course, to believe that that was possible, would then lay the ground, the railway, the railway to so many other patents. Now, if I'm a one-hit wonder, then what would happen would be um, I would go on and say, or if I shifted my mind to saying, let me exploit this or allow it to be exploited, what I would do is I would go and find all the different graphites out there, and I would keep doing the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. That's not what happened. Right? What happened was I continued to want to be an explorer in graphene. I shared this deeply with the late Mildred Dresselhaus, and she supported me. She encouraged me to continue to go on. Um, although I never attended MIT, I went to Rensselaer instead. Um, and even if you did go to MIT, it might not be the same time. You might not be learning from the same class. Uh, the mm-hmm. professor might be the same professor, but you're, you're, you know, they're saying something different that day. And it's that, that moment, that spark of when it happens is that nothing else matters is what you do with it. Absolutely. And, right. Can you find in your heart exploratory mindset and to keep that fire going? So then what I do, I said that, in fact, I went public on the Ted talk, the first TEDx and that I had, and it was, whether or not you could put graphene inside of substrates. And the first substrate I said was important was, was, um, was if we could put it inside plastics, mm-hmm. perhaps we could make the plastics more useful. Um, how, how would you like it to be useful? Well, if I then said, I want to make um, basketball shoes and I want to make tennis shoes, That's incremental change because now graphene being the strongest material that we know, it also belongs in the 23rd century, but through the hard work of so many great giants before me, it was brought into the 21st century. But what do we do with it? 
and with a 21st century mindset. We're like cavemen, uh, cave people looking at this this torch of fire and say, what does this do, right? <laughs> we didn't, well, it cooks food, right? That's probably the lowest incremental grade of what you could do with a, a torch, right? Instead sure. of lighting or creating combustion, no one's going to say create combustion, the steam engine, and then and then um, we, could, we could transport. No, we're not thinking anything like that. We want to cook food, right? So I'm giving you an example of the cook food version of graphene in plastics would be to make shoes. Or mm -hmm. make something like that. Instead, I wanted to change how plastics, which harm so many things, uh, increase the recyclability, maybe build mm -hmm. crafts so that we have lighter weight objects, but stronger since it's such a strong material, graphene. Maybe mm -hmm. it makes plastic strong too. Mm -hmm. I said, you don't have any background in plastics. I said, I don't. But did you have any background in uh, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, the 26 letters of the alphabet when you first born, none of us did, right? <laughs> right? So, so we all, we all, we all learned something along the way because we were having an exploratory mindset. We're not thinking when we're first born, how do I exploit this? How do I learn the ABC so that my resume could be written better? And then maybe I'll be hired by someone. <laughs> You're not thinking that. You're just learning. You're learning and then seeing based on your talents and your time. Now, as you spend time on something, incredible mm -hmm. things can happen. Bruce Absolutely. Lee spent time on his martial arts. And as a consequence, he captured the whole world with the um, the way he threw his punches, at the one-inch punch. Right, So that's interesting. Um, Bonaventura Cavalieri amazed the world because he didn't know he was going to die by 47. But as a, as a monk in Italy, he focused on infinitesimal changes and then became the grandfather of calculus before, before Isaac Newton. He was born before Isaac Newton. So, so you, we all have a choice. Is can we take that exploratory mindset and continue the flame and continue to be an explorer. Had I given up and been an exploiter, we would not be having this conversation, this podcast out of Harvard. Mm, yeah, absolutely. It, right. It, it's not. It's it's just not. And then when I had um, my Python classes through um, through through you know you, your standard um, classes, the way I approached Python was a very strange way because I never had Python before, and um, mm -hmm. I submitted. Uh, my answer, I was the first one to submit the answer because I had time. I'd created time, Jesse, to solve the question that Professor Henry Leitner had given out in class. And I and I, when I submitted it, it was it was somewhat of a of a of a of a <laughs> funny moment because although I'm the first one to submit it, um the answer was so long that Henry, Professor Henry had, uh, Leitner had written it as one line. He gave it back to me. You could have done it this way. <laughs> Right. So, but that's exactly what happens when you're out of the field and you go and explore. There's no, there's no, there's no such thing as failure. So when I got distinction upon graduation, I, I said, why would you give me distinction when I, I don't come from Amazon? I don't come from Google. Um, like many of my peers, um, I, I don't have any background. Everyone knew this. So they saw me going from zero to, and I wouldn't call it hero, by the way, because I went from zero <laughs> to being able to submit the answer in a very long-winded way, leveraging on all the TFs, right? Without the teaching faculty, uh, fellows at, 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 at the H, right? I wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to produce anything. So I needed help. Well, mm -hmm. you use that mindset, that example, and say, I needed help in plastics. So I reached out to one of the world's top plastics persons um, mm -hmm. out there, Professor Thomas Nosker. And I, and I said, you know, I have graphene. I, I now, now the world knows that I have graphene. I'm, a, I'm known as someone who was able to take raw graphite and convert it in one step into graphene. Well, mm -hmm. are you interested in working with me? Can we go on a date together, right? On this <laughs> exploratory date, right? Would you, would, you, would you say yes? And he said yes, right? <laughs> and then what happened was nothing happened. Right, all the things we did, nothing really interesting came out of it, other than some of the plastics would accept the material, but it wasn't 
like a perfect like oh let's let's go on the date and now we know it's a marriage and it's mm-hmm. also a marriage that has no arguments and it's a marriage that only mm-hmm. produces wonderful things we don't just like in business or in collaboration yeah that's not what happens right it's not it takes like effort it adaptation takes effort. and it takes failure and it Absolutely. takes endurance to continue to explore Mm-hmm. Another example, right, is um because you're you're British, right? You you know <laughs> of a of a of a of a of a story once upon a time known as Susan Boyle, who sang of course. right, right. Everybody knows Susan Boyle, but who <laughs> knew Susan, right, before she sang I Dreamed a Dream? Before she went on, right? And and yes, yeah, some people knew her, but you know, if you don't explore that possibility. You would be You'll doing, never know. right? You'll be doing what Susan was doing before she explored the possibility. So you explore the possibility and then let 10 years go by. And that's mm-hmm. what happened with graphene and plastics and me is that it now, now that we've worked it out, it now can replace aluminum. Wow. And, right. To uh, For crafts and things like that for, mm-hmm. so that we can use less fuel because it weighs a lot less than aluminum, but it's, it's uh, just as strong. Well, it is a- truly so incredible, the power of this material. And and I think, you know, a lot of what you're saying resonates um, with the message that, you know, it really does take a village to make something like this work. And it takes work and effort and failure and adaptation. And I guess, you know, on the on the note of collaboration, I'd love to hear you talk about how we don't only see Fingra as this public benefit corporation that commercializes um, uses of reactive graphene, but rather a platform and a community where individuals of all backgrounds, whether it be plastics or aircrafts or whatever it may be, can come together and discuss these potential use cases. And I'd love to hear your perspective on this and where you see this community going. You know, there's so many podcasts um, or interviews. I've done many um, out there that, that, forget about the the real important core is to create that community mindset mm. right if if you want to do something and the other person doesn't pick up your phone call right what happens right it it says it takes two to tango but it actually only takes one to not want to dance for it to just <laughs> fall apart right right you know of right course. so as long as right as long as the other side isn't willing so this community is a community that why it's called you know, calling out to all explorers, calling all explorers is because we, we need to be open in our mindset. And I'm going to share with you this really bizarre story over the summer that happened. Um, and, and I say the summer only because it's not the winter now, but it was, it happened, (laughs) um, because I was sitting next to someone who had a lot of uranium right Mm -hmm. now. Oh, he has a lot of dirty. He has, he has what a statement. Of, yeah. Greg, Greg Cochran, all right, uh, a CEO of uh, Aurora, managing mm-hmm. director, right? That's that's the term they use. Uh, he's out of uh, from Australia and he's sitting next to me in Stanford, Connecticut, talking about his uranium deposit. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, and I, I'm I'm sitting there and saying, Well, have you thought about uh, this yellow cake that you're going to be selling and, and making. And the the problem that um, why many people don't want a yellow cake, they want the birthday cake, but they don't really want yellow cake because it might contaminate the waterways and the supplies. And and here I have Fingra with the riding off of the Harvard 2023 Tough Tech, right? Mm-hmm. For filling potholes and fixing roadways. And so if I stayed focused, like um like i like i like a good like a good person would do right that's what we're told right then mm-hmm. i would probably not talk to greg while he's sitting next to me i actually sat to his left side and but what i decided to do in that moment of time is i said to him you know i i, I think that that um environmental toxins are a big problem especially the one called uranium toxicity for um for water and 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 life in general when it goes goes awry Mm -hmm. um did you know that graphene foam the one that's in the 2014 tedx that i had worked on invested in actually has been known to be able to remove uranium toxicity going from parts per million to parts per billion 
Um, and it was wow. discovered out of MIT, this foam concept. Only discovered mm -hmm. in 2021. It was published in 2021, but only much, much later, 2014 and 2021, seven years later. But did you would you would you like to work together? <laughs> would you like to <laughs> and 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 another exploration date? Right? Another exploration date. And he says yes. Right. And he'll never forget the conversation that in fact that's what he wrote me back. Is that I said, Do you rem remember? Um, you know, and a week went by and I wrote him and he said, of course I remember. Like, how could I never forget? Right. Mm -hmm. So, so that began the seed of Fingra, not just being able to help a real estate asset, such as uh, landlords having uh, potholes in their property. But what about if you're a landlord and I'm going to use landlord broadly speaking, let's say you're a municipality, you're a city. Uh, you you're you happen to be a stakeholder because you live nearby um, mm -hmm. and your children were to be exposed to uranium or 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 copper or other things. What if we could clean those things that have become extremely devalued and turn it around and sell them back at market price? What would mm -hmm. that model be worth? And suddenly, right, it's still in the real estate area. Um, properties and assets, except that this type of cleanup job and capability is now applying graphene instead of making fishing poles lighter or shoes or something like that, which are, which would be wonderful. It's just that, you know, if we're going to, if we only have one planet A and we don't have a planet B to go to, we probably want to have certain types of solution sets for extreme conditions and having an earthquake and and fallout would be an extreme condition. Having um, lithium batteries and then le le leading to how do you recycle these things and solving that problem would be another extreme condition. But then, because I was talking about uranium, and uranium is necessary to go to outer space and run space stations and stuff like that, I got a call to protect something, uh, that just a question. Have you ever thought of protecting a water bear what the heck is a water bear? Just like ABCs, you and I didn't know what an ABC was. We just started to learn it as we could speak. Before that, we would cry all the time, right? Because we couldn't communicate. Right? <laughs> and so, so what is a water bear? Or, you know, and a water bear tartic rod is actually a a an animal that mm -hmm. really cannot um can cannot be seen by the naked eye very readily, right? And mm -hmm. and this thing can um can unlock uh, it's also called a moss piglet by the way uh, can unlock okay. a secret right it's a micro animal and it can unlock the secrets of um of life extension wow yeah it was first described by a german zoologist johann mm -hmm. august Ephraim. i can't pronounce the name properly but it's <laughs> spelled g-o-e-z-e -E, and mm -hmm. it was 1773 mm-hmm yeah. And um and it has its own phylum, Tardigrada, uh Spalalanzi. And um and this particular item, if you look it up, you'll see they don't they don't have a um they don't have any clothing. You can find them in the deep sea, the tropical rainforest in the Antarctic, but it could help us to understand how they survive because they can survive extreme conditions, extreme temperatures, yeah. pressures, high and low radiation, mm -hmm. dehydration, and starvation. They can also Incredible. survive air deprivation. So if we understand how this animal, the water bear, can mm -hmm. survive in outer space, maybe with some um, graphene to help it, right? Create a suit or something, uh, uh, you know, a protective suit. What, what, mm -hmm. would it, what would we then learn about life on Mars? Wow. So and much scope. Right? This had nothing to do with me. Right prior to, <laughs> and if I didn't say one thing, the other thing wouldn't happen. If Bob Dylan yeah. became a cover song singer instead of writing his songs, what would have happened to Adele? Because she wouldn't have Bob Dylan's song to sing, right? So, so they're so all right. They're all so related. So the calling all explorers, the calling all explorers concept is, I'm calling out to all of you because I don't have. A finished story. It's just all happening. 
But if we don't explore, then we don't open up the other paths of possibilities. We don't realize the potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And on that brilliant note, um, I think we'll wrap up there. And I hope that to all that's listening um, is just as inspired as I am about calling all explorers to continue and to embody that philosophy of exploration and to not give in to exploitation. Um, and Dr. Chu, thank you so much. Um, do you have any parting words? No, I look forward to um, to speaking again. Thank you so much. <laughs>